Today I'm going to cover dealing with loss. But first I've got a few things that will keep it on track of being a Grand Columbia channel. Just as you can find a new adventure and a new love after your first marriage, so can you find a new life in a foreign land. For me, for now, it's South America. My name is Lauren Lau and this is my adventure in Grand Colombia. I'm going to get to dealing with loss in a little bit. First I want to talk about meat. Now, much of my videos come about as a result of various comments that I get. And one of the comments that I've gotten a few times in the last, well, since I've come to Columbia, is why is it always positive about Armenia? Why don't you ever have anything negative to say? When you were in Cuenca, you talked about the good things and the bad things, the annoying things. Why in Armenia? you don't do that. First of all, it, it is difficult for me, I have to be honest. I mean, I love this place, I've loved it for many, many years, and it's hard for me to see bad things. But that's not to say that there aren't. Now, first I want to go back in time, about 17 years ago, when I was living in Pereira for a short time, seven, eight months, whatever it was, I don't even remember. I wanted to make spaghetti and meatballs for Jenny's mom, Jenny, my ex-wife. Her mom, she never had spaghetti and meatballs. And I'm a cook, so I wanted to make spaghetti and meatballs. So I want to go to the market. So they take me to the biggest market, not too far from the house, I don't remember the name of that market and I've been by that area many many times and I don't see it. I don't see that place. I don't know. I, I don't know what the deal was but I remember at the time it was considered to be very modern and it had a wide selection of items or so I was told and it did. I mean it had Pantene shampoo. That's a big thing here or at least it was at that time. So I go back to the meat department because I want to make meatballs. They don't have ground beef. Now, I was first time in South America back in those days, and I had only been here maybe a month and a half when this all happened. And it was my first time to a supermarket. So I didn't know. So I go back and I'm looking for ground beef. They didn't have any in those days. Hamburger and meatloaf wasn't a thing. They had beef, they had pork, they had chicken. But one thing as I got close to the meat area with Jenny was the stench. Oh my God, it reeked. It, it, was, it was a horrible smell of rotten meat. The containers, whatever, whatever those things are, those big shelves. It was open. There was no top. I don't believe... It was refrigerated. I remember there were flies all in the meat. I just thought it was thoroughly disgusting and I just, it, I was really kind of soured on it. Now I lived for a while in Asia, excluding Japan, which is very modern, but I've been to many places, Vietnam, Korea, Philippines, and you see some pretty, you know, out there things. But the smell of this was, it was just, it was cloying. So, but Jenny said, no, no, and she goes over and she picks the meat out. And, you know, how am I going to make meatballs? I'm thinking, i got to chop this up. She says, oh, my mom's got a grinder. Okay, all right. So I get the meat, and we go back, and she's got this grinder, and it wasn't a grinder like you would think. It was two metal plates that basically smashed the meat. I'd never seen anything like it. It just kind of smashed the meat. It was really hard to do. It was a chore. Um, they used it for chorizo. They would put pork in it. Well, I was making meatballs out of beef. So I made those meatballs. But that smell always stuck with me. Now, I go to Manizales, and I go to the meat departments there, and they've got some really fine supermarkets. And there was nothing like that. It was very clean. It was, it was like going into any U.S. one. 
Input Ada, similar. So I come here to Armenia. Now of all the times that I've been here to Armenia, in the past, I'd never gone to a supermarket. And here, I've been to, there's a relatively new Olympica. And here, I did a video clip uh, getting some hamburger at Loralis Supermercado. It's my favorite place here in Armenia. No smell, very clean. Everything was fine. But a block from my house, block and a half from my, well, you go up one block and you turn right and go half a block. And there's an older Olympica. And it's real handy to go and get bread and milk and eggs. And they've got a meat department. Now, it's almost like a separate area of this building. And there's one reason I go back there, and it's at the very beginning, and that's to get this coconut water drink that I just love. It reeks. It was like going back in Pareda. Now, these have coolers, but I'll show you the video I took here. It was, it's disgusting. Meat is piled on top of meat, on top of meat. It stinks like rotting flesh. It was, it's disgusting. It's nauseating. Refrigeration doesn't help. It, you just know that there's rotten meat throughout here and you don't know exactly what it is. Obviously, I'm not going to buy anything there because I don't want to buy some rotten meat. So I haven't found it to be a common thing, and it's the only place that I've been to is like that. But it's a throwback to how things were a long time ago. And um, you just got to roll with the punches. You got to find, you know, you got to find good places. I will tell you that there's a number of butcher shops that will, you can do your order and they'll deliver right to your house. Now, I kind of avoid a lot of that because if I do that, then I'm never going to get out and walk. Okay, so I've been on my little hiatus. Where have I been? Am I okay? Thank you all for being concerned. Um, thank you for those who haven't given up on me. And um, I haven't given up on you. But I needed a break. I've been doing these videos for three and a half years now. And it's a lot of work. It really is a lot of work. may not seem like it, but if I do a couple, two, three a week, it's a full-time job. It's, it's difficult sometimes to actually live the life I'm trying to live and do the videos. N I'm not complaining. It's, it's a good hobby, and I don't want to be idle, and so I, I'm not going to give it up. But from time to time, I need a break. And this time, I needed a long break. I had two friends within a week I've lost. For the first week, it was a sorrowful, mopey, reflective play music of like one of the songs that uh, has, has affected me emotionally since I was 17 years old. It's called Talking Old Soldiers by Elton John. But I've listened to a lot of Leon Russell lately. And, you know, I went through this morbid, little self-pity, but not so much, but this just this morbid reflection of loss. And as it took me down that rabbit hole, I needed some time to sort it out. Now, we all suffer losses. I mean, the older you get, the more losses you've suffered. My life is no different. But how I've handled it is probably different than most people. You know, we've all suffered losses. I lost a father that I never knew. I lost a father figure. I lost a mother. I lost a brother. I lost a sister. I lost the marriage in the worst of ways, and I lost the marriage in the best of ways. The best of ways was a sorrowful loss. The worst of ways was good riddance. I lost touch for years of my two children because of lies and deceit. I lost friends while I was in the Marine Corps. I lost some of those friends after I left the Marine Corps. While in the Marine Corps there were strangers that I mourned their loss. Burning helicopter, couldn't get to people. 
My way to handle these losses was put it out of my mind. Put it behind me. Move on. Don't think about it. Don't look back. And I didn't. And it worked for me. But doing that, I discovered, creates a heart of stone. And to this day, whenever there's anything that should be emotional in my life, I should have feelings about something, it feels contrived. I feel dead, I feel empty inside in times when it shouldn't be that way. And how I've handled things is a direct result of that. So when I feel, I feel like it's pretend. So here I am with two friends lost in the same week. How am I going to handle it? You know how you go through your little week of mourning and sorrow, but after that, how am I going to deal with it? One of the reasons that I always moved on was I didn't know how to cope with it and deal with it. It began at a very young age, uh, this concept of loss. Nobody ever talked to me about how, how to deal with it. And I, you know, it's, I'm a guy, you don't, you don't, you don't worry about your feelings, you know, big boys don't cry. But I've got time now. I'm not working 24 hours a day, which seemed like much of my life was. You know, it's, I've got, back then I had responsibilities. I had employees. I had people counting on me. And I can't get wrapped up in loss of one thing or another. You know, I, my brother died of cancer. There was a time when we were very, very close, and I just put my head, I got the notice. Uh, I just put my head down and worked harder. I don't have time for that. I've got people counting on me, so I just have to work harder. But in this past month, I've got time, and I had time to stop and think and feel and look back and reflect on all of those other losses and as I look back and thought on those losses I realized how many how many there are far more people dead than alive than I've known now I gotta tell you I'm fine I'm, I'm more than fine I'm doing great but I'm learning to use my time in better ways I'm trying to take this time when I could fall down a rabbit hole where I could sit and lose myself and be constructive with it so that I can get on with life but rather than bury it and ignore it and pretend it never happened never existed I can really think through it feel the feelings that I do have maybe restore some things about me maybe restore my soul and then get back in the swing of things and get back to living my life. So I'm really grateful that I'm in a place where I am right now, doing the things that I'm doing, living where I'm living. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for this outlet. And for those that stuck with me, I'm very grateful. So, that's that. Last thing I want to comment on is, as you know, and if you read in the comments, there's information about it. I've been doing some consulting work and it's primarily been dealing with Skype calls. But I do want to say, these are things you normally wouldn't bring up, but it's happening over and over and over again. And I don't want to become jaded, but I keep getting emails saying, oh, I want to do this, 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 and this with you. And you know, how can I send you payment? And we can do a Skype call. And, you know, setting up what I'm going to do. Until we do that, I've got this, this, and this question. I answer them. You know, I, I, I'm not one to withhold information. But then they disappear. And I'm just, I don't mind answering questions, but don't be sleazy about it. You know, don't lie to me. Just say, I got a couple questions. If I can answer them, I'll answer them. You know, I, it's just really cheesy 
it's very discouraging to see that there's quite a number of people that'll scam on something as stupid as this. So I just had to get that off my chest. I'll see you soon.